Well, this teacher is very smart about the way in which she does this, and she actually uh, teaches these children the strategies of annotating the text in a language that they understand so that they can go back to it. This is something else I saw in another school. Uh, in another school, um, uh, the students were reading holes in the ESL class, but there were four new arrivals who did not understand the word, and the teacher went out after prodding from um, the principal and the coordinator and bought the same book in Spanish, and now it's the kids are reading Hoyos, those four kids are reading Hoyos in Spanish while the rest of the group reads holes. So that then when they discuss it together, this is an ESL, this is um, an English um, class, when they discuss it in English, they have at least the content so that they understand what's going on. And you know that this is the first step to learning a language. The way in which we learn a language is we develop receptive ability, we develop understandings. We, stand, we start understanding the message. And if you understand the message, it's much easier to make sense of the language that makes up that message. So that's another thing that I've seen. I've also seen bilingual graphic organizers you know, in, in another school, right? Uh, where they not only have uh, the graphic or organizers in two languages, but they also have cognates uh, uh, in the two languages. So that's, uh, you know, that's amazing. Um, there are many uh, schools that are having, that are, uh, I think, that are building, these are structures, new bilingual programs. Um, those are some of the ones that I know about. Uh, there are probably more, and there are also, and I should have written this here, uh, there are also ESL programs whose structures are changing, right? Because you're thinking, well, what is it that we need to do? Do we really need a teacher uh, pushing in? Uh, do we maybe at times have that push-in teacher pull out for reading, for example, so we can level the reading instruction? Uh, do we have self-contained ESL classes at times? Uh, so a lot of thinking going on about how to change these programs flexibly. Um, and I think that's it. So what, what we want you to do is to think of how to build on emergence, on bilingual, uh, on dynamic bilingualism, and on dynamic development to those three things which are our vision. To do that by always recognizing bilingualism as a resource in whichever way you can in your school, because every school is different. And one of the things I am so aware of now, uh, that I was aware of before, but now more than ever, is that every school and every community is a world. And you cannot do the same thing everywhere because your students are different, different because your community is different, and because your teachers are different. So you may have a lot of Polish kids, but if you don't have a Polish bilingual teacher, you can't have a program. You're going to have to go hire someone. But So uh, you have to do different things depending on your circumstances. And the second thing, then, is to make sure that you don't stop with bilingualism as a resource just for those kids that need it. But to think of bilingualism as enrich enrichment and to build this multilingual ecology throughout the school for the entire school population. Muchas gracias. Four minutes for questions. Okay. Any questions? No? Comments? Comments?